Hello and welcome to the online painting magazine and to my studio. I am Mara Trumbo and today we'll be painting my favorite flower, the rose. This one I have called Ice Queen. It is a snow white beautiful rose that comes in many shades and we'll be painting it on a wood panel. Often I buy secondhand frames or um, mismatched frames and I don't have a canvas to fit it so I have Home Depot cut them for me. So this is called MDF and I'm going to fasten up the video because I'm sure you don't want to spend half an hour watching me paint a black background. And what I have done here, <clears throat> if I was doing it purely black, I would have actually gone with a little roller to do this. But I decided to put a little bit of blue and a little bit of red into the background. Now this could be done two ways. Uh, in acrylics as I'm doing now, with a little bit of red now and this red is a bit vivid so I'm going to subdue it again with a little bit of the black in there so just only a little bit of the red comes through and a little bit of the blue on the cool side. Um, I'll continue with the black where the light reflects it looks white but it's going to be totally black right up to the end and then I would normally seal this off with um, and you can use a sealer before the paint and after the paint the acrylic paint but I like to put a satin varnish on so that when I paint with oils on top it's more sleek uh, less absorbent and the color of the acrylic actually blends in very nicely with the slight sheen of the oil paint so I'm just touching up a little bit of the blue and this as I said if you do a totally black background it can be done in oils afterwards but it helps uh, so that you don't smudge your hand. This is what the background would look like. A little bit reddish orange on one side, blue on the other on the cool side. And this is what my original Ice Queen looked like, from which I took a black and white photograph and from which I'll be making the pattern for you. But I'm going to teach it to you different. Although there will, you will have a pattern in this package as um, a guideline, you can also do it freehand. So just follow me and see what I do. I like using Grunbacher Max water miscible oils because I'm asthmatic and a lot of my students have health issues. They come in a, a whole of array of colors but I've only used some of the basic colors here which I'll break down in your pattern as well as the linseed oil made specially for this formula. I paint with Dynasty brushes and this is the Black Silver Collection and here's my favorite palette. Yes, I know, <laughs> it's a deviled egg platter and it's so elegant. I used to throw a lot of house parties. Now that I don't, the best use for it, it's in my studio. That little cup you see there is where I park the oil attached um, into the middle of my palette with a, a piece of tape. And so I've now liquidized a little bit of the white and I'm doing a little uh, sketch of the rose. This is the freehand style. So I'm putting in basically the oval of the rose shape, the stem and the a little uh, branch that's going off at the side where the eventually the bud will be adhered to and, and the leaves around it. I'm going to mix a little bit of the white um, with the bluish gray mixed that I have got in here and uh, it's going to dilute it a little bit because if I had to put that blue, which is transparent, it's actually a gray, gray blue. If I had to put that straight onto the black, you wouldn't be able to see it. So for the sake of the cameras, I have put a little bit of white in it. I'm also doing it a little bit thicker than I would normally recommend. You want the first layer to be very, very thin. And this is because uh, thick paint and thin paint stick better together. And if you have too much um, white, it'll eventually look chalky and come a little bit blobby. So go thinner than I have. So once you've covered the whole lot and do it like there's a dot in the middle and you're working towards that radius from outside in. And that way you get to, uh, to already get a sense of the shape of the rose. Here we're doing the teacup effect. You will have a sketch there with what I call a teacup, which is actually a Gary Jenkins expression when I learned from him. And if you look at that, it just looks like a cup sitting on a saucer. This is the throat of the rose, which will be done. You can actually do this in orange and yellow as well, but I prefer the um, alizarin crimson, which then fades into the white very softly. And you can use a mop brush here to gently work it out. Uh, I happen to have this big one with me, but I feel often if I'm doing a smaller painting to use the, the little one would have 
possibly been easier this gets in the way of the camera too but um, it, it's a soft soft hair goat's hair brush so there you are that just looks like a teacup sitting on a on a platter on a saucer so now we're going to highlight the petals so now you want to go for a lighter color so this will be your white coming up your pure white and you can start um, putting in a sketch as the guideline I will have in your pattern and that's the, uh, the way the petals are going to go and then you will have an invisible little dot in the middle of each of those petals and that's what you're aiming for uh, all the strokes will be from outside in in this instance unless the petal is upside down and then we will do it from the other way around so flatten your brush when you pick up the white paint always start in the middle of the flower that's where the sun hits it most or the light so you want that stronger and as it travels along the un, uh, the base color which is blue in this instance bluish gray uh, it'll pick up some of that paint and it'll diminish but this way it gives it a, um, a dimensional look because it's brighter in the middle and a little darker on the sides now these are the, the first strokes that I'm putting in um, and it doesn't determine the final shape of the flower it's just an indication and then I will look at it and see if I don't like all the petals I'm also using a filbert brush here and often I feel that too many little loops look um, not realistic enough so I switch to a flat brush but in this instance I've managed to do the whole painting with the filbert and sometimes I hold it sideways when I want a longer stroke so the petals set um, in the middle again with a stronger white and then from the side you're going towards that center vanishing point at the bottom so the center ones go down straight and the ones on the right come towards the left and the left ones go towards the center and now it's beginning to take shape um, the side petals are in this instance I've simplified the painting by putting less petals than I would normally do in a rose but it's just to teach you the technique and then depending on the size you go once you've done um, the skirt as it were or the saucer at the bottom and you feel it's looking a little bit bare you can add extra petals in between And I'm refreshing that end petal to make it look on top of the other one. Now looking at the back there's a little bit missing there so I'm putting it in now but it's too much white so I'm going to put the shadow color back in again and that you'd have to do backwards. You now start at the base and work yourself out. There we are. So add a little bit of the color that's in the throat of the rose there and blend it back in again. We'll continue going around the base. So these are the more mature petals, as I said, and um, they normally come in, in towards the center again. Everything is towards the center. If you look at um, a silk flower, uh, and sometimes if you have an old one, you can dissect it. Sometimes um, Michael's throw away the, the damaged ones. Pick one up next time you're in the store and have a look. It's all being held together by a central pin. Well, if you make pretend that there is a pin here, except Mother Nature has got the um, stamens there with um, the stem underneath, it's all being held together. So if you, when you stroke your petals, they're all going towards a central point. Now not all the rose petals are round, some have little points, some are squarish, some are broken up, some are eaten by little insects. So have fun when you construct the each and every petal, top, bottom, and then you look at the, um, the whole picture and see whether it's balanced, left, right and center, and if it looks okay. Uh, I do see a little bit missing there so I'm going to include another little what is called a foreshortened petal so you do the shape of an S with your brush and then you work it in and this is from top to bottom again starting from the middle down and it's very very tiny 
So it's just a little slither there. Now we're strengthening some of the highlights and this is by no means finished, you know, uh, right through the process every time I see something that doesn't appeal to the eye, I will go and change it. Here again, as I said, there were too many little loopy loops with the brush, so I'm removing some of the round uh, petals and leaving it in some cases. And this one will probably end up being a little turnover at the end. The rose is a difficult flower to get first time, but if you do enough practice, you'll eventually do it with your eyes closed. It's the most beautiful flower to paint and I'll never get tired of it. But I can never get to the same either, so I'll always um, turn them in my mind and remember back when I saw the closed ones in Italy growing on my mom's edge and the open ones in my cousin's yard and the ones I used to grow in Tennessee that the deer used to come and feed on and drive me mad about. And so uh, every time I go back down memory lane I'll paint a different one. There are so many varieties, all you have to do is actually get a... Um, catalog from one of the flower suppliers and you can feast your eyes on the various um, shapes and um, colors and of course nowadays you've got hybrids as well so they come in every in every color shape and size so the stamens inside are basically orange at the bottom and where the sun hits them there'll be a little bit and this pollen of course on top a little bit of yellow on the top um, try not to make them all in a little straight line like little soldiers, in fact like I'm doing now. <laughs> so put the odd one in to just make a difference. Now we're going to start on the leaves and I'm putting a little bit of um, burnt sienna with the green to make it a little darker straight under the petals because they'll be casting a shadow and then I'll strengthen the shadows afterwards too. Decide on the shape of your leaf and which way it's turning. Extend it in the middle and then start working from the sides towards the center and back. And it's basically a comma stroke. And you're just touching the edges going towards the middle and back. On the other side, which is the shadow side, I'm using a bit of a warmer color, a little bit of rust color. And then extend the tip there and put the line in the middle. Put another one going that way and again get it straight under the flower. Don't have it sticking out with a stem from the flower. And uh, or have them just touching what we call kissing when you have uh, a petal and a, and a leaf just uh, end to end. You always want it to make it look as though it's coming from underneath and will achieve that effect by putting some shadow colors in a little while. But we'll do all the leaves first and in here I'm adding a little bit of blue on the shadow side. Remember the canvas is painted with a little bit of warm red on one side and a little bit of blue on the other. So I like mixing my colors and especially rose leaves have got a bit of rust color all over them. They've got a bit of uh, red, a little bit of orange, a little bit of green. So this is the wiggle wiggle leaf and it's done by wiggling your brush in the same place, coming back up to the center and out a little bit so that it leaves a tiny cute little point. Sorry, it's a little bit of camera, but I'm going to show you a close up in a minute. So have them painting whichever way you think it's going. If it's easier for you, you may paint the stem first. So with your liner brush, you can do a tiny little stem. Uh, sometimes I do it backwards. I put the leaves in and then the stem will come out and uh, attach to it. But I love painting the wiggle leaves because as I say, you can put all the colors that are in your painting actually uh, sometimes leftover paint does the best job. 
and especially a little bit of rust if you look at rose leaves they all have that rusty burgundy color on them and um, a very deep green on the other side yellow towards the tips if it's too yellow though it'll look dead so remove it a little bit if you've gone too strong on the yellow and with a big brush if it's if you don't have a, a, a very well chiseled brush you can touch it up with a liner brush afterwards so here's a close-up so you put the brush down next to the stem press wiggle 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 and out press wiggle 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 and out you can see how much pressure i'm putting it i've actually got the brush shaped into an l shape i'm squashing it so strongly at the back so much pressure see that then up and out and up and out and up and out now this one has gone on top of that one i really wanted the end one to be on top so we just go over it again and if um if there's little smudges there as i said we can fix up the stem get some of the color from the leaves back into that stem so that it blends nicely doesn't look like it belongs somewhere else and then you can touch up the edges with a little bit of highlight blend it in gently and you can reconfigure the shape too bring out a little point that's possibly better looking than the one left by the bigger brush so you can have a lot of fun doing these little wiggle leaves I absolutely love them for fillers too Putting a few at the top depending how much space this one I've actually painted closer to the top than I did on my original one and since I'm painting it freehand without a pattern um, I'm making tiny little leaves with a smaller brush here yeah? they're a little bit too pale so they look like actually little buds maybe I should have left them as buds but I'm going to just darken a little bit with more green on the base of my brush so I always put um, the brush facing the light on top and the dark at the bottom next to the stem. So it's beginning to take shape as you see. So the baby breath is next. And um, I'm using a little bit of the medium um, with the same blue that we know actually this is Prussian blue I beg your pardon this has got Prussian blue at the, uh, in there but because it was very dark again on black it wouldn't have shown I've um, put on the tip of the deer foot brush a little bit of white so you can actually start to form some of the little lacy flowers with the tip of the brush but we'll go over it again in little clumps afterwards with the little liner brush so by doing little clumps of dot dot dots um, in threes in fives little families there um, and this is a work in progress again you start it and then if it's too wet and it's not uh, uh, looking sharp enough you can just leave it after a little while let it settle once it gets tacky the white will stick on better So the baby breath and Queen Anne's lace is done almost the same except the more sparse. Um, it's uh, a darker background and in this case it's um, ultramarine blue that I have used. Um, and then as it blends onto the deer foot brush it becomes various shades of blue. And that really makes it look transparent with the back. Then we're going to put on a stem on it and um, finish it off later on with a little bit more patience and time. Now I didn't tell you the beginning but I've speeded up this process so that you wouldn't be watching a one and a half hour video. So I don't normally paint at this speed so you have to forgive but a lot of it is repetitive work. So the stem underneath is um, one single stem but then it splits up in lots of little stems that go all around holding those tiny little clusters. So you can show some of the green in between the blossoms there. 
and the splitting twos and threes, the little branches. And the leaves are fine little fern-like, um, in fact they look like little palm fronds and we'll put those on later on. So the big stem that we put in at the beginning comes out the other side with a bud on it. So I have got the round brush loaded with green and a little bit of white on the one side. So your light is coming from your right, um, the light source is on your right. So you can either um, double load your brush or you can go back afterwards. So here I've come straight up with my brush and then turn it horizontal and pressed it which gives you that uh, it looks like a T from the golf club there. <laughs> and that's actually what's going to hold up the rosebud. So that is called a rose hip. Uh, for those of you that don't know in England, um, you can buy rose hip jam and it's made out of all those little seeds that are in a rose bush. Uh, when I was in Maine, I saw wild roses on the beaches. They were fantastic and the rose hips were so enormous. I, I was surprised that nobody has got around to making jam um, in there with it. So here is the bud and it's basically a U-turn you're doing with your brush. You come down softly without twisting your hand. You're twisting the brush. So it's got a lizard crimson at the bottom and white on the top. Then we're going to extend that calyx from the rose hip up with green and yellow. And the little one in the middle, we're going to keep it shorter than the ones on the side so that you don't lose the color of your bud. And what I'll do with your uh, written instructions, I'll also attach photographs of close-ups of each of the sections of this painting. So it'll be easier for you to look at and follow if you decide to do it freehand. That'll be a good guide as well. Little smudges do happen, so it's fresh enough you can pick it up with a paper towel. And if you have any problems, just dip it in your medium and that'll get, get it clean. So here I'm just re-highlighting the one side of the stem that's showing through the leaves. Now I could have done that before putting the leaves on top, but um, I normally paint by gut feel, so I never thought that out. Or I would have actually done that and the little cloud I'm going to be putting under here before putting these leaves in too instead of trying to work around it afterwards. So here we are, some more wiggle wiggle leaves with some of those nice rusty colors. So there's a lizarding crimson at the bottom with a little bit of green and the top has got uh, green with a little bit of yellow. And sometimes I also put blue in there if I want them darker. They are such fun. So now we're putting in the little wispy leaves I was telling you about. I could have used the rake or comb brush here, probably would have been easier, but I thought I'll do it with a little liner brush, except I couldn't find my very fine long liner. Always in the middle of my taping, I keep on losing half my tools. So I've got the short one here, but I'll make do. I just pretend I'm stranded on a desert island and all I got is a few basic essentials and make do with them. So some of the leaves are seen sideways, you're only going to see one side, some are three quarter view. So you put a slight little comma stroke on the other side of it as well. 
and then the ones that are in full view of course you'll see the fronds on both sides now you can see that baby breath still needs touching up so it's not finalized I'll be getting back to that later and also the stems having been taken down further um, I like them fading at the end I don't want the stem to go to the end of the canvas but um, they need a little bit of lengthening I just thought I'll keep them out of the way for the moment now here's my little finger painting uh, where those little wispy clouds are if that red doesn't show up enough in acrylic you can just pick up a little bit of alizarin crimson and white and smudge it over and the same with the blue on the other side so this is going to be in the back of the other baby's breath so it'll be difficult to put it in afterwards so I'm putting it on the base right now before we paint the second baby breath there and again with the um, deer brush I love these brushes I absolutely love them the st stippling brushes are a little bit harder and they're a little bit or one um, size as you know so they have to go straight down with the deer foot you can hold it at the right angle and be able to see where you're going with it too so they're much easier to control so this one is being seen more from underneath so I'm doing the base a little bit um, you see that little empty space there that's going to be filled with the greenery that you'll see coming through afterwards be a couple of leaves there and again you can put the leaves in afterwards if you're afraid of smudging uh, your painting so work always from the top down but quite often it's what I say not what I do I've got bad habits but I can also <laughs> find ways of getting around these things without uh, messing up my painting in fact I never even wear an apron in the in my studio because I hardly ever spill paint on myself or on the table uh, having said that I'm getting older by the day blinder by the minute <laughs> so one of these days is going to happen and then I said why didn't I use my apron the camera is picking up that light green almost as if it were yellow so you can control your colors probably better than I can when you're painting yours once in a while I go back and touch up where I see if I can add some more white with the deer foot brush but I'll still end up touching it up with the liner brush in little clusters you want to form the little clusters there of the lace and if the paint doesn't stick uh, keep a little jar of odorless terps on your desk open it up and just dip your brush into it and that'll make the paint stick to itself but remember to close the lid down again you'll be coughing and wheezing later on I often wonder you know just how many of our famous old artists that passed away with um, respiratory problems it wasn't because of the closed spaces no air conditioning in those days tiny little rooms lit up by candles which ate up the oxygen and them inhaling all these chemicals whether that wasn't um, hazardous to their health And then if you feel there's too much white in that one you can pick up a little bit of the blue and uh, dot 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 some blues in between at the end we'll do all that oh dear did i say i never spilled anything <clears throat> you didn't see that <laughs> that was a quick cleanup okay so now i'm extending the stems and i'm going a little bit uh, darker with a bit of brown on this side and letting it fade and you make it fade with your finger same with the others 
and then there's the other baby breath that goes through there and you pretend it's going through there but it's actually going behind the rose and out the other side and smudge it there as well and we'll probably put in another little one that goes up put another little leaf there that joins up And this one you're going to be seeing it full on so you're going to see both sides so as I said some are just profile one side some are three quarters you'll see a little slither on the other side and some you're seeing both sides so vary them to make them all the same size the same color the same strokes have fun with them oh smudge there no problem we just put another little leaf in there So it's time to touch up highlights and lowlights. So here we having on the shadow side we're putting a warmer color. Um, I, I mean a darker color there. So it's a little bit of brown mixed with the green, and even a little bit of uh, red is good. Most of the colors that you use in the other leaves. Now on this side, the cool side, we're going to put in a little bit of blue. And then when the sun shines most, we're going to pick up a little bit of light green with um, yellow. And we're going to let the sun shine a little bit on these tips of these leaves. And this is where you can also change a shape. If you feel uh, one is too straight and you want a few little jagged corners, go ahead, change your shape, make them a little bit larger. Now you also need shadows on the leaves. And just under the petals, what you do is with your liner brush, you draw a very liquidy line in purple. Purple is a better shadow color than gray or black. Then you get your tiny little mop and you spread them out. And this is how the soft transition should look like. Here's another look from further back and you can see the shadows being cast by the petals and it really is striking. So one last touch up on the petals. Um, I decided to strengthen some of the outlines. That one is slightly off camera, but it's just touch-ups here and there. This could have been a turn-up. Instead, I picked up a little bit of the leaf color. And Gary always says, leave it. It looks nice. It's a reflection from the leaves. So that little bit of green will stay on the white. I will not correct it. Reshaping that petal and where it's catching the light, strengthening it with a little bit more white. And we are done. It's time to sign your name. I so hope you enjoyed painting with me. Try freehand, it's not as frightening as it looks. But just in case, don't forget my packet instructions will be step by step with a pattern. Enjoy yourselves and try the different colors of the white rose with a green lilac or beige background. This is the pinky one. It's the same photograph that I've just uh, readapted and those are my two, my original and the one I painted today. Thank you again for joining the online painting magazine and my studio and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.